by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the American University in Cairo, I confer upon Dr. Dina Katabi the degree of Doctor of Science with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. I now invite Dr. Katabi to the podium to deliver her remarks to our, gra under, to our graduates. Dr. Katabi, the floor is yours. Oh, I have two hoods. So, President Dalal, uh, esteemed members of the faculty, um, the on, um, distinguished trustees, proud parents, and above all, the class of 2024 at the American University of Cairo. Thank you very much for inviting me to be here today to deliver this speech. I'm so honored to be here tonight with you. And there are so many things that connect me to Egypt. Like, I'm, I'm originally from Syria but also my grandmother is Egyptian. But perhaps one of the strong connections that I feel is with the Egyptian movie industry, which very commonly features AUB, AUC. So I was so thrilled to be asked to give this speech today. But delivering a commencement speech is a daunting task because it asks each one of us, like the speaker, to reflect on our own life experience and be able to distill from it advice to give to you, the younger generations. But, you know, I mean, each person is different. So what worked for me may not work for you. So, but still, I'm going to try my best to tell you about the things that shaped my life and hopefully you'll find them useful. So reflecting on my journey and the things that matter to me and shaped my ideas, they actually came from films. In many cases, Egyptian films. Growing up in Syria, me and my sister, we used to spend much of our time watching Egyptian movies. And they really shaped our imagination. They were not just an entertainment for us, but they sparked our imagination in so many profound ways. So just to give you an example, so there was this one night when my sister Nora woke up at 1 a.m. She woke up from her sleep. She was just four years old, imagine. So she was four years old. She woke up, she walked from her bed to, want to the living room where my parents were still watching TV. And she removed her pacifier and she said, life is so hard, I wanna get married. And this definitely came from Egyptian movies, otherwise I have no idea where it came from. But it wasn't just films, there was also books written by some of the most prominent Egyptian authors. Our home back in Syria was filled with books, books that my parents inherited from their own parents. So as a young teenager, 11 or 12, I was reading books by Taha Hussain, uh, Laat, Tawfiq al-Hakim, Nagib Mahfouz, Haikal, and the like. And those authors, they opened a vast world for me far beyond the confines of my limited surroundings in Damascus. Later, as I moved from Damascus to the United States to continue my education, I pursued a uh, PhD and joined the MIT Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering. Then I graduated, became a professor at MIT. And for the last two decades, I've been a professor at MIT working on innovations and I've been, I was elected to the National Academy of Science, National Academy of Engineering, American Academy of Art and Sciences. I got a MacArthur Fellowship 
And I grew and learned a lot from my time in the United States. I learned from the remarkable people that worked with me. But still, my profound principles really came from Egyptian culture. So let me tell you what I learned, three things that I learned from Egyptian cinema and Egyptian culture. So the first thing is about identity. So it's a question of who are you? Men and. This is a very simple question, but very profound. It was posed by Sa'ad Husni to Hussein Fahmi in the Egyptian movie Khali Balak Min Zuzu, written by the amazing Salah Jaheen. And this question is really important because it's really important that you know and you ask yourself who truly you are, what matters to you, and what doesn't. As Professor Dalla said, I come from a family of medical doctors. My father is a medical doctor. My grandfather is a medical, was a medical doctor. Um, my aunts, cousins, uncles, the majority of them are doctors. So I was expected to become a medical doctor myself. And indeed, I did uh, the Syrian Baccalaureate, which is the equivalent of Senawiya Amma here in Egypt. It's a national exam after which we get ranked and the top students get matched with the top schools. And in Syria, the top school is med school. So I went to med school and I spent one year there. I was the topper of my batch and doing very well. Just, I decided after the end of that year, I'm going to drop out of med school. I'm going to switch to electrical engineering. I decided I don't want to be a doctor. And that decision was difficult and it shocked my parents. It shocked everyone I knew back in Syria. But it was my decision and I never in my life regretted that decision. So, the society, particularly in the Arab world, has predefined notions for who we should be and what we should do and how we should act as a man, as a woman, as a poor person, a uh, rich person, young or old. However, I, my advice to you is to always think about who you truly are and don't let these packaged identities really take over you. Think about the life that you want for yourself, not the life that others want for you, and make sure that you live that life. The second thing I learned from Egyptian cinema and Egyptian culture is to have big dreams. So, who like uh, Hamad Munir in the audience? You got, okay. So, you probably remember that Hamad Munir has a song I'm not going to be as dramatic. First, I'm, I'm definitely not going to sing that. My, my voice is terrible, and you definitely don't want that. But, and I'm not going to tell you that if we stop dreaming, we really die. But dreaming, undeniably, is very important to our emotional health. Dreams are different from goals. Goals are specific desires. But... Having a dream is to be able to live your goal, believe in it, and embrace it. Dreams will carry you through any t anything that you will face in your life, and they are the essen essential for your success. Dreams also fuel your ambitions, and they are very important for success in career. So in my career, as a professor at MIT, what I do is innovation. I invent new concepts, new things. And by the pure fact that they are new, it means that they don't exist at the time when we start working on them. And it's only by dreaming and believing that we can make them possible, that we can succeed. So for example, President Dalal mentioned to you that work on wireless uh, signals wireless signals are amazing. Like if you think about them, 
they uh, traverse walls and occlusions. They, they, they move in space, traverse walls and occlusions, and they bounce back and they reflect of the human body because our bodies are made of water. And if we can analyze those reflections that, like I can transmit wireless signal, analyze that reflection that comes from you guys, I can actually get your breathing, your heartbeat, your movements, everything without touching you. When we started working on these concepts, we didn't know whether it's really possible or not, but we believed in it. And today, these devices are used by pharmaceutical companies and patients in Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, lupus, Crohn's, rare diseases, all over in the US and also in Canada. And it's very exciting to see how, the, how we can bridge AI with healthcare and bringing data science to the future of medicine. So my second advice to you is have your dreams and hold on to them. Even if one dream becomes impossible, learn how to transition to the next dream because your dream and your passion are going to be very helpful for you as you go through life. No matter what your goals are, you're gonna have ups and downs in your life and your dreams and your passion, your ability to cope is what is going to help you go through all of those challenges. The last lesson that I learned from Egyptian cinema and Egyptian culture is humor. So the Egyptian movies have told me the importance of laughter. You Egyptians are known in the whole Arab world to, be, to have the best sense of humor. You can crack the best jokes. It's in your genes and it is your superpower. And laughter is remarkable in its ability to make you resilient and allow you like a phoenix to rise from the ashes and deal with the tragedies of the world. As you graduate today, you are entering a world that has many challenges. Uh, there are economic instabilities, there, are, uh, there is climate change, there are wars, and most notably, the war on Gaza. Now, of course, all of these things can make you sad and depressed, and sometimes you might feel even hopeless. But don't forget that the world also has so many opportunities for you, opportunities to excel, to succeed, and to have fun. And despite all of the injustice in the world, there are always very good people, doctors who risk their lives to save patients, human rights activists who give voice to the voiceless, and artists, scientists, workers of all sorts who strive to make the world better for everyone. So today, you can join these heroes to make your mark on the world. And I trust that is going to be a very, very notable mark. As you work towards your career and your future, you are going to face difficulties. Your, your, your education from AUC, your friends, the people that you met in the last four or five years here on campus, and also your ability to laugh are going to be hope, the, the, your help to be able to keep moving through and achieve your dreams. So in, in closing, I ask you to be genuine, to have big dreams, and to embrace laughter. I'm confident that each one of you will contribute positively to our world. Your contribution will go beyond yourself to affect humanity at large. Congratulations, class of 2024, and I look forward to seeing you adding your mark to this whole world.